Hello, let's play some Phasmophobia with Mr. Valone, and we'll get to laugh at him as he poo-poos in his pants from all of the jump scares. Let's go to Tanglewood on professional difficulty. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to demonstrate to you um, some of the applications that you can find, just in things as simple as video games. Um, for how probability shows up in daily life, and more specifically, binomial probability. So, I always start on the smaller maps, same equipment every time. I start off with the video camera, the dots projector, and a ghost writing book. Video camera is nice because it has a night vision setting, so I don't even need to bring in a, uh, a flashlight to see if I'm my way around the house. Not that I would need to anyway, I have like close to 300 hours in this game, so I have played enough to know where everything is, and where everything spawns, where everything should be, stuff like that. I feel like my game's a little quiet. Well, and that is exactly why I bring the camera, so it's hard to see. It's like right over the bathtub, there's these glowing orbs. They're called ghost orbs. So the ghost orbs don't spawn everywhere, but they spawn uh, in the ghost room. So I know have ghost orbs as an evidence. So the way that this game works is that uh, you look for different evidences of the different types of ghosts, and depending on what you find, you check them off in the journal and it will narrow down your list of ghosts. Pretty easy. So I have ghost orbs. Um, they're a little bit usually easier to see from the truck because the screen is bigger. But uh, I saw ghost orbs in the bathroom. They look like eye floaters or lightning bugs or something. So I come back out. I'm going to grab some more equipment. Looks like he's been touching some stuff in there because the activity chart experienced a little bit of a bump. Let's see if we can get him to talk to us. Here I am assuming. David Petit. I know I closed the. Yeah, there you go. There's uh, fingerprints. Fingerprints. Alright. That's easy then. Are you here? Are you close? Are you here? Are you close? Are you here? Are you close? So he does not seem to want to talk to us. That is okay. Looks like Spirit Box isn't happening. And uh, you'll notice that checking Spirit Box gets rid of all the ghosts on the list. Um, I'm still checking Spirit Box for a very important reason. Technically, ghost orbs could be used as a secret evidence. If we get Spirit Box, we have Mimic as an option. So. I am concerned about getting Mimic, which is Spirit Box fingerprints and freezing temperatures. So, you gotta be careful, because the Mimic will pretend. That's quite a jump in activity. That's interesting. Um, the Mimic will pretend to be other ghosts. Like, they will inherit the abilities of other ghosts. Let's do flashlight. Grab a camera just in case the ghost decides to show himself. All right, David. What's what's happening, Chief? Now I've played this game quite a bit, so I know 
uh, more or less where things belong. So if I spot something out of place, it's gonna tell me that the ghost is in that area. But so far, he's been pretty relaxed. He hasn't been in this room at all. This might actually be like a foyer ghost. It's weird that I would have found... Oh. Okay, that's EMF2. Oh. Wait. Yeah, there they are. Okay, fingerprints are glitching out on my end, but there's a handprint. <laughs> Do you guys, uh, you guys see anything wrong here? I, I don't, I don't know about you, but I have five fingers on my hand, not six. Not six. We're done here. Speed run. You know that is not um, the thing that I set out to prove in this in this uh, this video, but that's a great example of it. Um, okay, so I know it's an Obake. Obake would be what? Obake would also be EMF five. This actually might be the perfect ghost for this. Okay, so watch this. We have a. Uh, we have this thing here. Let's go to Obake. This is the wiki for basically all the information in the whole game. So watch this. We've got that the Obake has a 75% chance of leaving fingerprints instead of the usual 100%. This means that an Obake is not going to leave fingerprints on everything he touches. Which we could model using the binomial distribution. So if he touches 10 objects with a 0.75 probability of leaving fingerprints on any one interaction, this is what the distribution looks like. It appears to be skewed left with a single peak at 8. And so the chances that he um, doesn't leave fingerprints, which let's bump this down to like 3. I think we saw him touch 3 doors. So this says that with a 75% chance of him leaving fingerprints, he's going to leave fingerprints on all three surfaces that he touches about 42% of the time. There's a 42% chance that he leaves fingerprints on only two out of the three surfaces. One out of the three surfaces is 14, and zero is 1.56. So it is possible, and think about how crazy this is. It is possible that this ghost, who has fingerprints as an evidence, if I watch him touch three things... There is a very small chance, it's not zero, it's just unlikely, there's a chance that he won't leave fingerprints on any of those objects. And so if I walked in the house and I saw him touch something, and I put, fly, shine my UV flashlight on it, and I don't see fingerprints, I'm going to be like, oh, okay, so it's not fingerprints. But the fact that it's an obake means that he doesn't have to leave fingerprints every time. So if I had just... UV flashlighted one thing. So if you go back in the recording, go back in the recording, look at when I shine my light on the on the bathroom door. There was a little bug there where like it was hard to see the um, the fingerprints. So this was a little visual bug with the UV flashlight. But if I had just looked at that and seen no fingerprints, I would have ruled it out, and I'd be wrong, right? So there's this very slim chance here that we could be wrong. We could be making an improper decision, incorrect decision. Additionally, here's what's insane. The Obake has a one-sixth, so about a 16% chance of leaving six-fingered handprints. This is the only ghost that can leave six-fingered handprints. So, let's talk about this. This actually stacks. So, the, the binomial distribution here stacks. We have the chance that he touches three things and leaves fingerprints on all three things would be this probability here. That also is compounded by the fact that out of those three door touches, the three times that I got fingerprints, he has a 16-ish percent, it's like 0.16 repeating, 
chance of leaving a six-fingered handprint. So, we currently live in this universe right here, where out of three confirmed fingerprint sightings, he leaves a six-fingered handprint on one of the doors. So, there's a 34% chance that we live in the current world that we live in. So, that's a very interesting um, idea. So, this doesn't often happen. In fact, it's much more likely that you will never see six-figured handprints. But the more fingerprints you look at, the more likely it is to, to find something like this. So, in fact, um, speedrun, we would be getting uh, EMF-5. Matter of fact, we're only at 10 minutes. Let's go find EMF-5. Do I already have a flashlight? I do. Let's go find EMF-5. I know it's an Obake already. But we're trying to find EMF-5. This was the original thing I wanted to make the video on. There's EMF-2. Oh, dirty poopy water in the sink. That's gross. What's this guy's name? David. David Petit, can you do something? Can you say something? Can you show yourself? Are you here? Where are you? Can you do something? Can you say something? Can you show yourself? Like that? EMF-5, right? Look at the, the EMF reader. All five dots are lit up. So, this is insane. Look at this. And then the door is EMF-2. Picture is EMF-5. EMF-2 again? Or was it this, this door? Yeah, it was that door. So, this ghost is going absolutely nuts. I'm going to leave before he kills me. But um, So, the way that this works is this EMF-5... The EMF-5... It's the same thing. If you go into the wiki, let's go back two pages. Here we are at the EMF reader. Uh, the EMF reader, the way that it works is a ghost touching an object is an EMF-2. A ghost throwing an object is an EMF-3. And an EMF-2 or EMF-3 has a 25% chance of being an EMF-5, which would be an evidence. So in the journal... If we go to the evidence tab, we could select EMF-5 if we see at least one EMF-5. So if we see EMF-5 at all, so let's say out of five times that we use the EMF reader, we have a 0.25% chance on each. So this says that if we see at least one success, I can now use it as evidence because I've seen it. So there's a 76% chance that there will be EMF-5. But, we could still live in this world right here, this 23% uh, likelihood, where he might be touching things and might be leaving behind some EMF, but he's hiding the EMF-5. So, he's not actually leaving EMF-5. What if we saw him touch 10 things, and we wave the EMF reader over 10 different things that he's touched, and they all leave EMF-2 or EMF-3? We'd be living in this world here, this 5.63% world where this ghost is being so super sneaky and hiding this EMF-5 that we're going to wrongfully assume that he's not an EMF level 5 ghost. So this plus the fingerprints makes this like the perfect ghost uh, to be an example for binomial probability because what you're talking about is the probability that you're going to make a mistake. So if we watch him EMF, or we watch him touch 10 items, and then we EMF those items, there's a 94% chance, right? There's a 94% chance that we would have seen EMF-5 by now. So if we say there's no way it's EMF-5 and we rule it out, we're going to be wrong 5% of the time. And 5% is the magic number, which in this instance, in this application, we need 11 trials to see. But technically, statistically, the magic number is 5%. So if we're lower than 5%, from a statistical perspective, we're going to reject our initial assumptions uh, about the situation that we're looking at. So in this case, if I see 11 consecutive touches and none of them produce EMF-5, I feel confident enough that it would be statistically unlikely for him to be an EMF-5 ghost. But it is possible that if I only watch him touch seven items, or even worse, three items, and I don't get EMF-5, there's a 42% chance I'm wrong. So 
Now, there's a very slim chance that every interaction is going to be EMF5. But there's a really good chance, a 42% chance, that out of those three interactions, none of them give EMF5. Because each individual interaction is 25%. So this, uh, this understanding, so this is a 57% chance that I'm going to be right if I say it's probably an EMF5 ghost. Um, over here, there's a 42% chance I'm going to be wrong by saying it's not an EMF5 ghost. So this is, uh, I don't, I don't think there's a more perfect ghost that we could have been using uh, as an example here. I'm not even going to bother with the optional objectives. Um, I just want to see and be sure that I'm going to be right. Like I said, this could be a mimic, and that'd be really crazy if the mimic leaves behind six-fingered handprints, because it can. Okay, so it is an Obake, so we were right. Um, I took more time like explaining this than actually playing it. But, like, this is the perfect example of how binomial probability can be used to describe and make decisions on things. In this case, it happened to be a, um, it just so happened to be a video game. Um, and just for the sake of it, let's do, let's do another run. Let's do it on Willow Street House. So, we'll start it up and we'll, we'll go to a different map and, uh, we'll see what kind of, probabilities can be used to explain the things that we experience here. Ugh, gross, we have fog weather? Fog weather sucks. I'm gonna do everything basically the same. See, here's a big patch of fog moving through the truck. I hate fog, it's so difficult to see. And then when you are outside and you activate the night vision, it's like impossible. You can't see anything. Alright. No music box. Ooh, we got tarot cards. We might actually just start off using the tarot cards. Tarot cards are pretty cool. I'm gonna do a quick once over on the house and see if I can find, um, let's get the breaker turned on. That's useful. I'm at least gonna try and find the ghost room. Which, What's this? Uh, a rib cage. Okay. That'll be good. I need a photo of that. Let's see. I'm still looking for orbs. I approach every game basically the same. Uh, on the small maps, look for orbs first. And then while I'm looking for orbs, I'm also using my ears like that. Sounded like a shoe. Sounded like he threw something. You hear that? Maybe that was this room. See the ball is slightly moving. So he's in this room here. He just rang the cell phone. Yeah, he's throwing all kinds of stuff in here. I don't see orbs. But I can leave behind my dots in my writing book. Let's see if he'll do dots. Come on. Now he's interacting in the bathroom. He's wanting to wash up. So personally, Um, I play this game in a certain order, basically every time I find it to be the most effective. So I drop in those three things, which are all three evidence items, or evidence gathering items. Um, I can also judge EMF 5 based on the chart in the truck. So this jump of 1, 2 tells me that I had an EMF interaction of 2. So instead of an EMF 5, which would jump up 4, 5, or 6 tick marks on the chart, this only jumped up two. That tells me it's not EMF5 for that one thing, for that trial, for that touch, for that, I think that one might have been the shower. So when he turned on the shower, it was an EMF uh, of two, not five. So and now that I'm out of the house, he's doing nothing. So that's kind of interesting. So let's look for fingerprints. We'll get a ghost writing book. In the truck, you can also switch between night vision and regular vision. 
I am not seeing orbs on the night vision. I'm also not seeing dots, so maybe I'm just not here long enough to see dots, but so far, no dots. So this light will show us fingerprints if he touches stuff. I think I already have an EMF. We also have tarot cards, so we can play with those in a, in a second here. Now that we're kind of narrowing down where he is. Let's see. You touched anything recently? That was... I don't know if you saw that. Kind of hard to see. I'm blowing out freezing breath right in front of me. There it is. So we have freezing temperatures. So there's freezing temperatures. Leave this right here. Are you here? <gasps> so it started over here. That's an EMF four. Are you here? Are you here? Where are you? Yeah, you are. Alright. Well, that gives us Spirit Box. That is Spirit Box and Freezing Temps. So one of the things I need to be on the lookout for now is one of the options is a Moroi. Moroi has a special ability where it will place a curse on you. So if I'm at 71% sanity right now, two, three, four. See that that uptick of four? That was a ghost event. That's a manifestation. That's not a uh, a result of EMF five. So that I know was a ghost event because I was inside to experience it. And then he interacted with something else that produced EMF one, which means that was an EMF level two in person. All right. Uh, Moroi will curse you. So, I'm going to go sit in the... Well, I was going to say in the dark, but not really in the dark. Uh, holding a candle will prevent your sanity from draining. So, I'm going to go sit in a dark corner in the house with nothing but a candle. And if I come back out and my, my sanity is still like 72%, I'll know I'm not cursed. If it's anything lower than 72%, I will know that I'm cursed. Um, even if you're cursed, the Moroi will decrease your sanity while you're standing in the light. And if I'm next to the candle, I'm in the light. So I'm going to give it like 30 seconds, and then I'll leave the house. I'll check my sanity again. Um, I usually don't reference the journal for this information, but I believe they mentioned it in here. Place curses on their victims, curable only by antidotes or moving very far away. There's a lot of... How did he know I was here? I don't know if you heard that. But he blew out my candle. Which is very scary. I don't like that. Get up the ramp. Okay, so it's kind of hard to tell now. Because I did lose a ton of sanity. But I also witnessed a ghost event. So I'm not certain whether or not I was cursed. And lost sanity. Or it was because I saw the ghost event. Because I looked right at him. <laughs> he, was, he was right there. That is a lot of activity. This very well could be a Moroi. And Moroi's become more active as your sanity becomes lower. So there's a good chance if I go back in the house, I'm going to die. So that's kind of scary. Um, let's put that back. Fingerprints would be Mimic. You know what? Maybe it is Mimic. Now that I'm thinking about it. 
I haven't seen orbs, which is weird. It should have given me orbs. Because there's not many ghosts that can just teleport to where you are, where the player is. That ghost just teleported to me. He should have done a ghost event back in the bedroom, but he did a ghost event up here in the living room, which is not his room. I'm gonna drop that. I know I'm below 50% sanity, so I'm just gonna drop that and run. Um, almost every ghost can hunt below 50% sanity, so I'm not trying to get uh, killed by being in the house for any period of time. Now, taking this pill will boost my sanity by 30%, but it will also cure me in case I'm cursed. So now I'm 78%. Let's take another just to come up to 100. So let's take that. And then let's go get a spirit box response. Or maybe there's orbs in the front room now? If there's orbs, then it's a mimic. Or I'm looking for fingerprints. Orbs, this is the hard part. Orbs would be Onryo. But orbs could also be Mimic if I have fingerprints. Because the orbs from a Mimic are not technically in evidence. Let's take this. Let's take this. The orbs from a Mimic are not in evidence. But the Mimic makes a lot of sense here because... That should be the only reason why the ghost teleported to my location. Is he just up here now? Because he threw that coffee cup. So I'll tell you what. Let's, um... Let's get a spirit box response. And let's get cursed again. And see if that happens. If I get cursed... We're done. We're, it's easy. Are you here? Are you close? Are you here? Are you close? Are you here? Maybe he's not up here. Is he back in the bedroom now? There should be stuff thrown all over the room by now. It's freezing temps back here, so he's definitely here. Are you here? I didn't ask how old you were. But he told me he was young, so thank you for that. Okay. Now if it's a Moroi, now I'm cursed. So I'm gonna go grab the... Candle again. that. Grab a lighter, just in case. Grab a flashlight. Let's go sit in the dark. I am at 91%. If I am cursed, I will almost instantly drop to 80% after like 30 seconds in the room. Even in the light. Okay, here I'm ringing phones. This time, if he does an event, I'm not going to look at him. That way my sanity won't drop. He turned off the light in this room. Oh no, he turned off the breaker. The whole house is off. He turned off the whole house's power. Let's see. If I dropped way below 91, I'm cursed. Eh. I'm probably not cursed. So that would rule out a Moroi. So that's actually a good thing. Because that's a scary ghost to get. Now it's Onryo, Twins, or Mimic. Mimic would be EMF 5. Which, according to the chart, we likely don't have. There's a jump of 2. There's a drop of 3. There's a drop of 3. There's a drop of 2. Here's a climb of 1, climb of 1. That could be Twins, but... What I just saw would be six interactions, right? The idea is, at 25%, if I watch six things happen, 
the probability of at least one success, I would have seen an EMF-5 82% of the time by now. So it's not 100%, right? I'm not s totally safe. There's still a 17% chance that I could be wrong. But my gut says that's not an, not an EMF-5 ghost. Unless something happens on the chart, see, there's another three. And I wasn't in the house, so that's not a ghost event. There's a jump of three. I need to see a jump of four, a jump of five, or a jump of six in order to say that's EMF-5. So still haven't seen it. All right, so let's go back into the bedroom. And let's go find, just in case this is an Onryo, I should leave this here and take a crucifix. Onryos hate candles. If a light near an Onryo extinguishes, then they can begin a hunt. And that includes the lighter in my hand. So if I hold a lighter, they can blow out the lighter and do the same thing. He just touched the computer. Yeah, there it is. He just touched the ball, too. Do I have an EMF in here? Yeah, there's a three on the ball. Oh, and a two on something else. Oh, the, the computer and the ball. They're both giving EMF right now. Get rid of that. I don't want that over here. All right, so here's this. Let's place this right about here so it covers basically the whole room. Did you throw this back at me? No, that just bounced off the wall. Let's put this here so I don't have to look at it anymore. I, he just touched the door and he did not leave fingerprints on the door that's a very good sign because unless this is a mimic unless this is a mimic mimicking an obake unless this is a mimic mimicking an obake I can now rule out fingerprints every ghost besides the obake is guaranteed to leave fingerprints if fingerprints is in evidence it's a 100% success rate so now we're between Onryo and Twins. Twins would give EMF-5. My gut says this is an Onryo. So I'm going to grab a candle, which there's conveniently one right here. I'm going to put a candle right next to the crucifix. <gasps> Jesus Christ. This is a very long event where he chases you. Oh my god. Very scary. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. Now I have a lighter and a smudge stick. Let's grab. <gasps> Jesus Christ, bro! He's actually nuts now. He's go. He's going freaking insane. Absolute goblin mode right now. Why is he up in that front room? Okay, so here, this right here, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a jump of six. No, jump of s yeah, jump of six. That's the event that was in the bedroom. And then the event ends, and then one, two, three, four, five. That's the ghost event in the front room. He interacted with something in between there, and then that event ended. And then he did another interaction, and then that's the other interaction going away. This is a lot of stuff. I'm fairly confident that this is an Onryo. The problem is now, my sanity is low enough to be hunted. So if I go back in there, I'm going to get hunted now. So let's go. This is a very scary ghost at the moment. So hopefully Mr. Valone doesn't just, you know, walk into this house and go die. We'll see. I have hiding right there. Let's turn on this light so I can find my way back here. That'd be sick. Okay, candle's still lit. That's good. As the kids say, it's lit, fam. Right? That's what the kids say. So it's still freezing. He's in this room. If he blows out the candle...
I have a lot of concerns now that this actually isn't an Onryo. I have a lot of concerns that this is a Mimic. He just touched the door again. But he didn't leave fingerprints. Jesus Christ! That's one of the scarier events. Thank you, sir. Let me out. Let me out. Oh, my God. All right. So... A Moroi would have done ghostwriting by now. The fact that I can't find the Onryo ghost orbs is the part that's messing with me right now. I should have seen the orbs, because there should be orbs in that room, because that's the room that's freezing. So why don't I see the orbs in this room? Am I just not looking hard enough? And he just did a hunt and an event. So now I'm 20%. I have more pills. So I could prevent my death by taking more pills. Let's prevent my death and take more pills. Should we give me 70%? Let's go move a camera and see if we can find some orbs. Because if this really is an Onryo, I should be able to find the orbs. Because the fact that he's not doing ghostwriting would rule out Moroi. So why on earth... Why are you flashing the kitchen lights? Stop that. The amount of stuff he threw makes me suspicious of Mimic. Is it freezing in the room or is it freezing in the hallway? Come on, do freezing breath again. Okay, it's hallway now. Maybe that's why I couldn't find the orbs, because the orbs are now in the hallway. Which is possible. The ghost can change which room is his favorite. So let's go take a look. I'll leave that right there so I can find my way out if needed. This is another downside to having foggy weather. It makes everything a little bit blurry in the camera. Show me orbs. Huh? It's definitely freezing. Is it freezing in this room too? There's no way. There's no way. Bro, what? But it's freezing out here? And you're touching stuff all over the place. Um, dude is insane. Okay, not there, not there. I know it's not freezing everywhere, right? Is this game broken? Hello? What door was that? He just killed the breaker. This ghost is certified going goblin mode. No ghost writing. It's freezing in every freaking room you walk into. This ghost is actually being insane. Then he hit the alarm clock. Run. He interacted a lot. Let's go see what my sanity did. I'm kind of losing my mind. That's not that bad. That's not that bad. And that's a lot of stuff that he just touched again. And that's not EMF 5. So like... I don't know. I can't find the orbs. If this is an Onryo, I don't know where the orbs are. But he hasn't done ghostwriting either. I mean, we could make a stupid decision and go start pulling tarot cards. I think it's I think it's time for a stupid decision. Let's go pull tarot cards until we die. Alright, let's leave this. No! 
No! You're joking! That's the one tarot card that kills you instantly. The first card. I didn't I didn't plan that. Alright, I died. Let's pick a ghost and see if we're right. Let's go on Rio. Even though I can't find the orbs to save my life. It's the moron. He didn't write in the book though. And it didn't look like I was cursed. So I don't understand. This is a uh, this ghost was this ghost was something else. I, I don't know. So there is absolutely 300 hours in this game. There's still times that I'm wrong. So here we are. And you got to see Mr. Valone poo-poo in his pants a little bit. So, oh well. Uh, I lost all the equipment that I bought. That's awesome. So, yeah. Peace out. I'm going to go cry.